Court date after court date and still no trial set for the former Houston police officer charged in the deadly Harding Street raid. Gerald Goins is set to return to court on Monday for another hearing for the deaths of Regina Nicholas and Dennis Tuttle four years ago. Now the families of the couple killed on Harding Street are wondering why justice is still delayed. KPRC 2's investigates Mario Diaz has that story. Just a sweet loving daughter that I miss so. The only items Joanne Nicholas has left of her daughter are pictures and memories. And I just wonder why. They weren't violent. They've never been violent. Nearly four years ago, Nicholas's daughter, Rogina, was inside her home at 7815 Harding Street, the same home where Houston police narcotics officers executed what is now called the deadly botched drug raid on Harding Street. Narcotics activity was going on in that residence, uh, specifically the sale of black tar heroin. They said it was a drug house and I knew it was not a drug house. Rogina, along with her husband, Dennis Tuttle, gunned down after cops serving a no-knock warrant burst through their front door. It was a drug house. I knew it wasn't true. Police investigators say it was made up. KPRC 2 investigates first uncovered HPD's internal investigation detailing that the drug raid was built on lies. Chief, you indicated you had reason to be at that home. There appears to be no reason listed in this affidavit. The man at the center of it all, an HPD veteran, former narcotics officer Gerald Goins. Today we charge Gerald Goins with two counts of felony murder. District Attorney Kim Ogg charged Goins with capital murder. The federal investigation also led to charges. Yet four years later, and Goins still has yet to face a jury. Four years of no answers for Joanne. She needs to take care of this mess that's going on down there and take care of it and, ser and serve justice. This is a great place to be a bad apple in public service. Mike Doyle represents the family of Regina Nicholas in a civil lawsuit against the city of Houston. All these years, the family knows that this has all been about how long can they delay this and how long can they delay accountability. There's no reason anybody in Harris County should wait four to five years for justice. We should be having trials within a year of the evidence being presented and going to court. Does it send the wrong message to Houstonians? I believe it does. The Houston Police Officers Union President Doug Griffith also questions the lack of justice served, revealing the raid left a black eye on the department. Did someone lie? Yes. Will he pay the price for that? Yes. And while the union is not paying for Goins' defense team, Griffith defends the officer's portrayal of Dennis and Regina to secure the no-knock warrant. I feel sorry for those two people that are killed, but I still stand by my belief that they were drug dealers and that they fired upon our officers first and our officers reacted. How many times has either HPD or the mayor of Houston contacted you and said, I'm Not sorry. a time. How many times? Zero. At 88 years of age, Joanne is pessimistic after all that she has seen in the last four years. Do you think in your lifetime you'll see justice for your daughter? I'm afraid not. The city of Houston already has allocated over $1 million to battle the Nicholas and Tuttle families in the civil case. And after visiting with the family of Regina in Louisiana earlier this week, they made one thing very clear. They are not going away. Yeah, you know, Mara, we know that there were other officers who were charged in this case. Where do those cases stand tonight? Keith, you're referencing uh, Goins' partner, Stephen Bryant, and a neighbor who initially made the false 911 call that put Regina and Dennis on HPD's radar. Both were charged. The caller entered a guilty plea and was sentenced, as did Bryant for falsifying records. However, he is still awaiting federal sentencing. Okay, all right, we know you're going to stay on top of this, Mario. Thank you. All right. All right, remember, if you have a story for KPRC2 Investigates, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at kprc.com.